Hey everyone, I've got a bit of an unexpected but very exciting video for you all today. This past weekend, pretty much on a whim, I built a full-scale replica of Scuba Circuit inside Forza Horizon 5's Event Lab. And to my own surprise, it actually turned out pretty dang well. So for some context, after competing in and winning the Dream Team series in Assetto Corsa, I've had a strong itch for some proper racing, and unfortunately, as much as I love to play Horizon, it doesn't really offer that in its base map. The open roads with checkpoints are great for more street racing style events, but aren't well suited for clean and close circuit racing with a full convoy of drivers. Really the only spot that works well for that is the Horizon Mexico circuit, the only real racetrack in the game. Big surprise, I know, but actual racetracks are good for racing. Who would have thought? So when I race with my community, HMC gets a lot of use, but I've been wanting more. So last week I started searching for event lab racetracks and actually found a couple that are really awesome. Huge shout out to Cosworth and Bono Ballistic for making these fun Silverstone replicas and Lupo der Wolf for making a very cool Monza. If you're looking for some real racetrack replicas in Horizon, I definitely suggest checking these out as well. Unfortunately though, my favorite track in the world, Scuba Circuit, was pretty much nowhere to be seen. A few people have tried, but really all of these use fake starts, where you have to drive into the circuit first before actually being on the track, meaning they don't really work for live multiplayer racing, so I took it upon myself to give it a go. I've never made anything like this before. My test track uses all in-game base map roads, and even that took me weeks. So remaking this track and doing it justice was something I felt was far out of my wheelhouse. But I had an evening to kill that night and figured I'd start it and just see how I felt. I had Google Maps on one monitor and Assetto Corsa loaded into the map in another, with Horizon in the middle. Google Maps was fantastic, actually. Being able to get a bird's eye view is obviously quite helpful, but they actually took the Google Maps car around the track, which I think is both kind of funny and incredibly helpful. Google Maps also has a feature that lets you measure distances, and this was huge for helping me figure out the length of straights and radii of corners. On top of that, I could keep Assetto Corsa open in the free cam mode and just fly anywhere I wanted on the track to get any camera angle I needed. I'd lay down a part of a corner or strip of a straight and then look at it from a few different angles, check my resources, maybe test drive it even, and if I didn't like it, I'd delete it and redo. After about two and a half hours, I had a complete circuit, and it actually kind of looked like scuba. There were some imperfections, even though this starting point I used is great, it isn't perfect because there were a few spots where I had to avoid obstacles in the existing game world like here where there's a tree, and here on the final turn coming into the straight where I had to dodge a light post and another tree in order to finish the track. This meant I did have to make some slight adjustments, but when I overlaid my version against a real track map, it still looked really close. There were a few spots I knew I could tweak though, so I fixed what I could, and by the next day had a layout I was happy with. I then surrounded the whole track with dirt runoffs and used walls to create painted lines and curbs around the entire circuit. That part sucked. Laying down strips of paint in something like 10 foot increments around a 1.4 mile track on both sides was not my idea of fun. But it really pays off for cleaning up the rough edges and making the road look more real. By the next day, all the curbs and painted lines were finally done, and by this point I'd say I was about 15 hours into my work and finally had something that was truly drivable. From a gameplay perspective, the track was essentially complete, and now all that was left was the fun bit, decorating it to look like the real place. Obviously, when it comes to the list of props we have access to in Event Lab, the concept is more so to get the idea of what's there in real life, not an exact replica. I also didn't want to max out my prop budget. I wanted to make sure older consoles would still have good performance when driving on the track. And honestly, this all came together really well for me. I feel like all the important bits are there and recognizable to their real life counterparts. And this is the point where I started thinking, oh man, I might actually finish this and it might actually be good. 
Building out the rest of the decorations was a breeze. This was by far the most fun part of the build as I watched my barren floating track turn into something I knew as Scuba Circuit. At first, I figured I'd just focus on the main layout, but when I got past the iconic Dunlop tire, I figured if it's gonna look like the real track, it's gotta have the same roads. And if I'm gonna do the same roads, I may as well make them drivable. So not only is the full circuit here, I've got separate share codes coming out for the short circuit layout and also the full circuit with the chicane. So keep an eye out for those. I'll probably update them in the description. All right, so this image right here brings us to the morning of January 1st. I had started just two nights ago and here was scuba circuit. I spent the rest of the day cleaning up paint lines, raising the dirt around the curbs, trying to smooth out some of the bumpy parts of the track and find fine-tuning some aesthetic details. The main issue I felt was that the track was kind of bumpy. It's really hard to manage banking and elevation change with nothing but perfectly flat pieces of track, but that same night I was laying in bed thinking and figured out a much better way to handle banked turns. So the next morning I completely tore up both of the hairpins and the final corner and rebuilt them from scratch. This took ages but was so, so worth it. The track was finally driving the way I wanted it to. And with that, it was pretty much done. I gave it one more day just to keep test driving, sent it to some buddies so they could check it out and test it for me, did a bit of multiplayer testing, and then signed off on the project. In all, this took about four days and roughly 30 hours of my time. It was an incredibly rewarding project. I honestly didn't even think I'd finish, let alone finish in under a week with an end result I'm really proud of. So I can't wait for you all to get your hands on it and let me know what you guys think. And honestly, I think this is just the beginning for me. I'm already looking into another project. Thanks everyone for watching. I really hope you like the track and I'll see you in the next video.